Hey guys, welcome back to How To Rip. We make surfing tutorials at How To Rip to help your surfing progress. The other thing we talk about is surfboard selection. And today we're gonna to talk about a new surfboard on the market, a high performance fish, which is the evolution of the seaside. It's by Machado Surfboards and it's pretty exciting. So firstly, the reason why I'm doing a review on the Glazer is because I love Machado Surfboards and I love how they make hybrid fishes. I love the high performance fish because I surf small waves a lot and they're the kind of boards that go really well in those kind of waves. And that's why I'm interested in it. And that's what led me to the GoFish. And then from the GoFish, the evolution was the Seaside, which was more high performance. And now we have a more high performance version of the Seaside, which is the Glazer. But it's also the evolution of the Biscuit, which you might remember was a Channel Island surfboard many years ago, was the Machado model. So let's break that board down now. So I've got the Seaside here. This is a 5.2 stock dims, and I've been surfing this board a lot in waves from the one to four foot range of fairly average quality, but sometimes getting not too bad. But there's a few things to remember when we're transitioning from our Seaside onto the Glazer. There's a few key differences with design, but also with construction. Now the Seaside is made with a helium construction, and the Glazer is made with an LFT. Now basically, how that transitions to how it feels under your feet Helium feels a bit more lively, it kind of sits on the water a little bit more, a little bit more flex. Whereas LFT feels a little bit heavier so it kind of sinks into the water a little bit more. Now for smaller waves, I found that the seaside feels more lively, feels more energetic and it helps you generate speed more. however, feels a little bit heavier under your feet. And I did notice in the small waves that I surfed on the Glazer that if I was on the seaside, it would have felt a little bit better just because it has that little bit more buoyancy and it helps you generate speed more in those kind of waves. However, in saying all of that, the LFT will be suited to when the waves get a little bit better or when the wave gives you that shape. And I had the opportunity to get some small waves that had some sections and the LFT felt great when I got that section. It just wasn't as good at generating speed like the Seaside. So where the LFT comes into play is in waves where it gets a little bit bigger, a little bit more powerful, where you've got a lot of speed. The LFT helps you control that speed more, whereas the Helium kind of helps you generate more speed in waves that need that. Let's have a look at some examples. So in this example, you can see the wave started off pretty fat and pretty slow, and the helium goes really well in that sort of scenario. You can see it's helping me get over those fat sections and helping me control my speed and generate speed. But as the wave starts to get a little bit steeper, and I'm about to get presented with this good section, you can see that it's steeper. Now at that point right there, it felt like the board could have easily slid out had I pushed any harder. But that's where I think the Glazer will shine. You'll be able to drive through those steeper sections. One big difference in the Glazer compared to the Seaside 
So the Glazer has more rock curves, particularly in the nose. I think you can see there, there's a lot more nose curve. Now what's going to be good about that, is that's going to help us when the section is good. When we get a good section on a wave and we've got lots of speed, we're going to be able to push hard on the board. Sometimes on the seaside, if you had a lot of speed, a little bit bigger, bigger section, you'd almost feel like the turn was going to slide out. So here the same thing happens again. On this turn I had to kind of pull back a bit because it felt like the board was going to slide out. And then here I had a lot of speed, it was a bigger wave and I kind of felt like the board was sitting on the surface more than I would have liked. But by having that extra rocket in the nose, it's going to give us more control in steeper sections. So when we get the same section on the glazer, it's going to allow us to push harder without feeling like that board's going to slide out. The other thing about this board design which is going to help in that regard is the tail. Now obviously this is a thruster, you can also see the tail shape there. Look at that rounded tail, that's going to help give us a little bit more hold and a little bit more drive in those sections. So if this board is made to control speed and it's not as good at generating speed as the Helium Seaside, how does it go in small waves? Well I was lucky to have a session in small waves recently, it was really grovelly and it was actually a lot worse than it looked on camera. You'll see that it shows responsiveness, it shows drive and it shows speed in small average waves. So even though the Glazer is in the LFT technology, you can see here that I could still generate speed with only a few speed pumps. You can see on this wave it was small and it didn't offer much potential, but as soon as that wave gave me a little bit of shape, the board started to really light up. And the board felt great here, putting it on rail, even on a small fat wave. And like I said, when I did get presented with a section, the board felt great, so I'm really looking forward to getting this board into some better waves to see how it goes in them, because I think it's going to go to the next level. So like I said, the Seaside is a 5.2 stocked in, and that comes in at 26.5 litres. The Glazer comes in at 27.6 litres in the 5.2, so it's got more volume packed in, and I was a little bit worried about that because I love the Seaside, and it feels perfect for me, and I thought maybe this will feel a little bit too buoyant. But when I took it out into the surf, I didn't really notice a difference, it felt exactly the same. So how they managed to hide that foam in here, I'm not really sure, but you can't feel a big difference. I think sometimes with these kind of boards, because they're quite short, for example this is a 5'2 and I'm 5'8, people get put off and they think how am I going to paddle that thing? But trust me, you don't have to worry about that. This board was an easy paddler, I could catch any wave I went for and it's easy just to cruise around on. The only thing to remember is there's a small sweet spot when you're paddling, obviously because the board's smaller, so you can't be too far forward or too far back. But with some time spent, you'll find the perfect place to paddle. Like I said, I can't wait to get the Glazer into some better quality waves to really test this board's full potential. Guys, thanks for watching the video today. Hopefully now you understand how the Glazer goes even in small waves. Even though it's designed to probably handle a better quality wave, still goes really well in small waves and I'm stoked with that. If you've been riding a seaside, I would definitely recommend stepping up to the Glazer, particularly if you've felt that the seaside has sometimes sort of restricted you when you get waves with a bit more power, where you get given a really good section and you've got a lot of speed and you feel like it's gonna slip out. I think the Glazer is gonna fill that void in those conditions and in those situations. Remember to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and comment below to let us know what other videos you wanna see. And also give me your feedback. If you've got a Glazer, I'd be interested to hear how you find it. Do you guys love to surf? Well, so do I. Now you can check out my latest range of clothing called I Love Surf. And for a limited time only, with every purchase of I Love Surf clothing, you'll get a limited edition free How To Rip DVD.
Go to ilovesurf.co and you can find a range of clothing to suit your needs.